in for a treat with uh, the main highlights of the day. We have two keynote speakers finishing up our day today. Um, and before I introduce them, uh, I just want to thank our sponsors, uh, the Theoretical Sciences Visiting Program here at OIST, uh, which is hosting our two speakers, um, and also the French Embassy in Japan for their generous support for making this event possible. Uh, thank you very much for your support. And um, yeah, the, the topic of uh, this event is the metaverse and virtual reality. Um, the metaverse uh, is a topic that has been uh, loudly discussed in all the media around the world. Um, will we find ourselves in a future where everybody just sits in their bed wearing head, headsets and interacts virtually? Um, or maybe uh, will technology take us in a different direction? These were some of the topics that were discussed today. Um, and uh, the lectures tonight will show you um, a kind of inside view into the laboratories working with these kinds of technologies. Um, and you'll see that, especially for people who are not in this field, that the kind of impression that you might have of what is the metaverse and um, where are these technologies, is actually much more diverse and maybe even more exciting than what the media portrays it to be. So I hope I raised some of your expectations of what we will see tonight. So let me introduce our uh, first speaker. Shunichi uh, Kasahara is a researcher and project leader at Sony Computer Science Laboratories. And he received his PhD in interdisciplinary information studies from the University of Tokyo in 2017. Uh, before that, he joined the Sony Corporation in 2008, and he was an affiliate researcher at MIT Media Lab in 2012 before joining Sony CSL in 2014. He's currently leading research on cybernetic humanity, which explores the new humanity emerging from the integration of humans and computers. And this research has been presented at top conferences around the world, published in all the scientific journals uh, that you would want to publish in. And he has also conducted interactive exhibitions and implemented social implementations for public uh, interaction. Starting uh, this year, 2023, he's running the Cybernetic Humanity Studio as part of a new collaboration between Sony CSL and OIST. Um, and so thank you very much. And uh, it, the floor is yours. Thank you. So thank you, Tom, for a great uh, introduction. So hello, uh, nice to meet you. My name is Shunichi Kasahara. You can just call me Shun. Uh, it's first of all, it's on a super honor to be here and then talk to my research. And then I thank again to the giving some this opportunity for Sony CSL and OIST and the TDIC, TSBP, and the French Embassy. Thank you so much for having this special uh, moment. So I should just one more request. We have a translator in the back. So in order for her to translate in real time into Japanese for all of her speakers, just try to speak slowly sure. during your lecture. Thank sure. you. So even I have a honestly 100 slide today, <laughs> but I will try, I will try. And sometimes I use a Japanese in, in compliment, uh, can compensate the so understanding. Okay, so thank you so much. And then again, my name is Shashun, and then I'm, I'm a Sony computer science, I'm a researcher in Sony computer science laboratory. And also recently I joined the OIST as a visiting researcher. And then recently uh, we started some new studio in the Bravo 5. And then after the public lecture, we are also planning the public uh, sorry, open lab. So you can also come and try some demos, which I will show. So, so, so let me, a bit of background about myself is uh, like a three pillow, three aspect of myself is uh, one is a researcher about talking about, investigating about the human perception and cognition or human augmentation. The other side of me, by me is like an engineer, to kind of engineering some software development or kind of system integration to make possible to new experience happen. And also, as a third perspective of myself, is an artist to make 
the, the those kind of research into the society. The artist, uh, art inspiration or some exhibition is a very important part of the, my pro, uh, the project and then giving to the question to the society. So I do uh, sometimes the exhibition. So the, today I want to I want to talk about the cybernetic humanity that is my topic and also uh, the, what is the connection to the metaverse and virtual reality. But uh, the, in general, I'm, I'm exploring about like, uh, the, what is the self in the computer and the human integrated. So you can also imagine, oh, this is myself, and but what if we have some multiple, uh, sorry, the metaverse inside the computer, we can also having uh, some virtual reality body, right? So it's kind of a it's kind of the integration with the, me and the computer in the same time. But not only some like a visual. We can also, I want to show some uh, interesting video here. Uh, this is coming from the, the Sony PlayStation, but not, I'm not mean to the, I'm, uh, I mean, advertising, advertising Sony product, but just like, just because I love, love this idea, okay. Hope I can, you see the sound, not? No, no, okay, give me a second. I should, I should check some like a sound setting because this is good video. Let me, let me push it. Okay, so even that I cannot, you can hear you. Uh, I can change the setting. You cannot hear, okay, anyway, anyway, so that is actually complaining about the person is, I cannot do that. Usually I cannot do that, something like this. Usually we cannot do something like this. But for instance, in the computer game, for instance, they, they say like, oh, I can do that, I can do that, something. I can do that, usually I cannot do that, right? So of course this is talking about the video game, right? So video game, but we can also imagine those kind of technology and now this is making happen in our real life. Right? So from that point of view, okay, so we will get like some kind of possibility of the doing something usually we cannot do, but I can do. But in point, some point, we actually, actually thinking about it, then what is a, what we feel self in those kinds of uh, new possibilities. Of course, we can imagine like having a new technology or new ability or new bodies and it's a kind of argumentation, like or oh, having some virtual body or some like a new ability, but also <clears throat> how we feel it in subjective way. If we cannot feel this is myself, it's more like look, or technology actually losing myself. So how we can how we can kind of balance and how we can integrate these two argumentation and also subjective is making together and then creating a new form of the, self, the humanity. Uh, that is because I put the cybernetic humanity. So today I want to talk about the three topics and then about like, this is my action, this is my body, and then this is me. So it's actually relevant, super relevant to the metaverse and the virtual reality. So I, will, I, want, I want to start my talk with, uh, this is my action. So the starting of these topics, I want, to, I want one volunteer to show some human limitation. So it's a bit embarrassing, but uh, I, if possible, Nick, can you help me to uh, demonstration something? Sorry about that. It sometimes happened to my presentation. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So now I will release the pen. So Nick, please catch this pen. That's it, okay? okay. So maybe we can go there, the right, please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nick. So thank you. I know it's a bit embarrassing, but thank you for helping to showing some human limitation. So that is a human limitation. So this is actually the uh, the wider master project by the Junichi and Kenji Suzuki. So as we can see it, actually in the pen drop test, we cannot catch the pen. That is a human limitation. So of course, like it's also hard, almost impossible. But if we have some technology, hidden secret technology, and connecting something, what happened? We can catch the pen very easily. Something like this, almost one hundred percent. So why we cannot catch the pen? 
because we are very late. We have a latency in the processing of the perception function, the multiplier, and also massive construction. And it takes some up the 240 period 50 milliseconds. That's why we cannot catch them. That's why we cannot stop the car in the front of the accident. But in the case of the <coughs> video, sorry, I put the muscle, uh, muscle uh, EMG uh, electromyography measurement to the person who are released. It means like measuring the moment of the release, muscle activated. And also we connected this signal into the another person to the electron muscle stimulation, which means like applying current into the muscle and then cont cont contract muscle directly. It's actually forced to move to catch the bell, right? Okay. So that's why in the video, they can catch the bell. So we actually demonstrate this phenomena in the many, many uh, occasions, something like this. So, okay. Yeah, so they all. So we are in the, in, the, in the very beginning, we are very, we are very happy that, oh, I can catch the bell. But we, we, like a, we just saying, oh, this is because of the computer. And then that's, it's very nice, something like this. We are uh, exhibiting those kind of things, but uh, we, we are doing some exhibition over the time. Something very interesting that happened. For instance, in the next video, okay, so maybe I'm not sure that we can play the video, uh, sound, but the next video, the first trial is without EMS, without any the electricity. And the second trial is with EMS, so let's see. <laughs> So he was very happy. And he said, oh, I did it. I catch the pen. But I actually experienced, oh, sorry, gentlemen. This is not your ability. This is because of EMS. Right? But as many person mentioned, oh, but I feel I catch it. This is interesting because the EMS is actually applied just before then our intention, our movement. But still, they feel like, oh, this is my movement. So I think we found out oh, this is a very interesting phenomenon and then try to and identify what is the time cost, what is the boundary of the self in the action. So we tried we, uh, with this person, three person, we uh, tried the preemptive action project. And it's this very simple uh, psycho uh, psychophysical experiment and then trying to like some, we apply many EMS and then try the participant to answer the time, how much did you feel this is your, yourself, something. Then in the end we found like even we accelerate his muscle, the, their muscle, the 80 milliseconds faster than you can do, but still we feel this is my action. So it means like, a, this is a little bit let, uh, step back to the more like abstract way. So this like a pen drop experiment is actually my motion and also computer motion is integrated into the one muscle. And the question is then, can we feel this is my action? If not, it's more like for computer is actually me and I don't have any volition like the freedom. But if we can design the assistant in such a way, we can provide, oh, I am doing this. Also computer is there, but so of course, when we, you can, when we think about more like a complex task, something AI, also sometimes AI is going to overperform the human processing. And also maybe you might remember, uh, you might know about the recent chat the things in some point, they are exceeding some the human biabilities. And this is a kind of my, my like asking some GTP to writing some grant proposal and then they, this, they, they are doing the great, great. So it means like when we think of the integration of the computer and the human, can we feel like, oh, this is my action or not? So it's not like some jet GPT things, but we also try the experiment like what happened when computer and the, com the machine, uh, my computer and me doing some action even with some like a decision making happened. Right? And then in the, I, I, I just like skip some very detail, but in, in a very simple way, we, do, we did some like a simple task, like a choice task. And the EMS also help you to doing something. And also sometimes human mistake. And also, in, um, also, also uh, we intentionally EMS also applied them correct or not uh, incorrect motion. And in the end, this graph is showing that how we feel this is my action is actually biased by the result. This means this graph showing like a, when we doing, when we outcome, the, the kind of the, the output was the correct, we are more likely to attribute that success to me. And if the task was failure, we are more likely to blame the system, or oh, this is not me, this is because of the computer. 
So these are actually the human, kind of the human nature, but I, when we think about kind of human computer integration, we have to really care about this. Of course, we can apply these kinds of robot arm um, things, but for instance, when we think of the robot by ping pong, doing some ping pong over the system, it's actually very hard. It's almost like impossible. And then maybe like a TV or like, oh, it's pointless. But also we can imagine like an automatic robot movement to hit back the ball, something like this. And then not only the auto, so because we can do that. And then we can also imagine like integrating this automatic and the human motion together. But even if we design this kind of way, he will maybe think, oh, this is my action. And this I did it. So I think that those kinds of things. So when we think about the computer and the human integration in action, we think we have to think about how we can design to keep the attribution of the self. And then I don't go to in the, uh, go the deeper, but uh, there are several moment, several factors to, to keeping sense of agency, which is like a feeling I am doing. Uh, it's make like a based on the two factors of the sensory feedback and also intention is kind of the integrate, uh, aligned together. So that is a uh, talking of the action. And also I, move, I want to move on to the body things. So this is a, my body. So you know, this is my body. You see like a, our body is here. But also when we think of virtual reality, we can change some visual uh, the conditions. So this is actually the band that very kind of five or six years ago. And then with uh, this Yamaguchi University, uh, Yamaguchi uh, Wycombe and also KU University collaboration. And that is uh, what, watching your own body by through the virtual reality. It's very simple. Like uh, it's even the wireframe, this kind of moving uh, I'm watching some my movement in the virtual reality. Right? And sorry, sorry, I will I will play again. Okay. And something happened. <laughs> so so he will he wear the virtual reality and then moving something. And then he said, oh. I feel a bit, bit lighter and a bit good condition. I didn't do anything at the physical. I don't inject anything. And I didn't do anything. But I, only we apply some of the visual uh, change of the actual motion. So not only the actual the showing the actual movement, we anticipated a bit, anticipated predicted motion. And instead of the actual body movement, we show it. And then he said, oh, I get body lighter. But important point is that he don't know the motion is intervened, but just feel like, oh, I am like it. And also you can easily imagine that if we apply delay. <laughs> okay, so we can also make you hungover even you don't drunk, right? Or maybe we can imagine like uh, even you, you have a physically drunk, uh, we can, I can also make your body lighter by virtual reality points. But anyway, so that is an interesting point of this project is actually we can control the sense of self, sense of the body by only the visual. Right? We can also tweak your, how you feel, okay? So I think like a change of rendering the body is actually providing a change in sense of body. It's actually a great potential of the metaverse. Now also I'm what, I also tip into the another potential of the kind of new metaverse or new body things, uh, beyond one mind, one body. So I show the robot arm, Okay, so like a, we can also imagine like a, using robot arm, something like this, right? So, oh, I can do, I can, I can make it like a, feel like I am, uh, this is my arm. So the, this is robot arm, so we can also copy it. So we can also imagine, oh, I have two arms. I have two arms and doing uh, part of things. And the two explore this uh, ideas, we actually tried uh, the power of ping pong so with these uh, collaborators. Then the idea is, what if we have uh, two bodies, but low thick arms in the two tables? And also like it's, can, we can also control the two of them. And then play, playing a ping pong in two tables, tables at the same time. Of course, uh, we might, we might uh, you might say one day, like, but our conscious or kind of mind is very just one and our attention is very singular. This is true. But when we think of some kind of a technique to split or some switching correctly or some kind of things, we actually can make it feel like, oh, I am doing ping pong 
the two arms at the same time. So, so there are some like exploration about having a two arms, but I, also this kind of experiment is uh, giving us the question about then, can we adapt to multiple body at the same time? Because I, now I'm using the multiple body, my body, so I can imagine like a, my, my I, I, I understand my body, but what if we have a multiple body? It means we need to adapt. We need to like learn to learn to use own body, each individual body, right? So then to investigate this experiment, I we did a one uh, simple uh, experiment using uh, the, the visual motor rotation. It's called the Parallel Adaptation Project. So this is by the Didrian and Namiko san. So it uh, is a very simple experiment. Like uh, for instance, you can imagine where the Hetman display and also doing some kind of reaching task, okay? your virtual reality hand. But at the same time, we apply some gradually rotating your body from the, your, original, your original direction. So it means like even you are doing straight motion, your motion, arm motion will be slightly rotated, for instance, left, like left, uh, left hand, left side or right side something. If we apply this rotation very gradually, you, as you can see some here, we can actually adapt this rotation even without knowing it. This is called implicit adaptation. So if we apply this rotation gradually, we can adapt this rotation and we don't notice it. This is implicit adaptation. And also important thing is that in the in the moment of the in the moment of the here, and that we in we intentionally cut off the rotation. And then you see like error is happening, movement error is happening, but it's not go back to the directly. It takes, takes some time because our internal model is updated and it takes time a bit time to go back to original. So that is a, that is a usual rotation, adaptation to rotation. But when we think of two, two bodies, we can also think about the two rotation. Can we adapt two rotation at the same time? So we did it in the virtual reality, okay? So sometimes you see your body and then that body is slightly going to the left side. And then you see that another body is slightly going to the left, right side. And if you do it in your usual view, it's impossible to adapt. So you can see that the larger, many errors here, it means you cannot adapt. And we can really think about, oh, this body is going to left, so I have to go right, something like this. It's very cognitive demanding. But if we do it in the third person viewpoint of something like this, it's because you see your body in right side, a bit right side third person and the other side third person. Surprisingly, they can adapt in both rotation at the same time. And also more surprisingly, if we erase the rotation intentionally, there are after effects, which means like uh, still, I mean, a bit giving us some error because they are adapted in, 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 in internal model. And so we, in conclusion is actually, if we do it in the in first person, sorry, the first person, we, can, we cannot. But if we apply this rotation in the third person, somehow we can implicitly adapt this rotation without knowing it. So I think that is actually important to think about multiple body because we don't consume any the cognitive resources to adapt to bodies. We don't need to think, but we can do we can whatever you want for bodies, and then we can adapt to bodies in, in implicit. That is a potential of the metaverse and of the virtual reality. And also, like a, in the last mom, last project, I just like a touch about this. Uh, this is me. Okay, okay. Last quiz. This is me. See, this is me. Uh, without grass, without grass, but this is me. And. Do you think do you think this is me? Maybe yes. Do you think this is me? Mm. Okay. But actually, original one was something like this. And then when we see it, something, it's clearly we can see the changes. But if we like a, we are very much uh, less sensitive to the visual changes. If we have a, some like a visual occlusion, we are very, how to say, hard to detect some changes. Then we can also apply this idea to the recent machine learning techniques again to generate very, uh, very morphing images, slightly gradually morphing images. And then recently we found like a very visual technique to like uh, 
change the visual without no without people knowing it. So then we can also find like some like a met, uh, metrics. But here is a, what if this kind of things happen to my face, right? So we did it in the called morphing identity experiment. Then uh, this is a this is a based on the experiment with the uh, exhibition. I will show the video. So so this is the experiment. So the two persons come to the booth. And then kind of the photo booth, right? And then taking a picture. And then after that, they can also talk to each other over the, the videos. But it's important here that these two faces will be gradually morphing each other. So you can see here. <coughs> right? Now it's kind of the middle of, of the two faces. And then finally, it's get to be uh, kind of completely swapped. And then that's actually like provide a chance, allows us to investigate what is the boundary of the cell. Do you think this is to you or not? Something. So we actually, in, so actually implementation. So there are several the te technology behind that, and also like a creating some like a GAM based morphing system. So maybe like a kind of uh, creating some inter interpolation of the faces, something like this. And also we can animate these faces by in real time. So that's why it's kind of like a defect kind of uh, uh, the type of the technology. Then you see like uh, this face is going to be me. And we put like this experiment, this system into the, some public uh, the execution. And then we actually collected data, how much people understand it. this is myself or not. Okay. okay. So maybe I can, I can a bit skip late, skip so here, for instance, okay, as long. So when the participant, a guest, feel like, oh, this is not me, we ask the participant to uh, the the press the foot switch, for instance. That then we can get the data of the how much they feel like this is not me, and then you know the boundary of the self. And then we collected data and then we found like oh, actually there are some kind of the boundary of the self in the matrix. This matrix. Then this means like uh, in, in even in the twenty percent in the morphing, it's actually changing, but still they feel like oh this is myself. Okay. So we actually uh, experiment these kind of things, and then also um, we found like an interesting phenomenon of the. Also, there are some like a gender change, gender gender differences. Also, like a, a bit sad, but also like a, this graph shows like a, uh, if you get older, your self boundary get larger. So you might a bit think about the why it's happening, but it's kind of point like a female male female actually we brought this one. The male more like having a broader sense of sense of self boundary, and the male female more like a smaller boundary. Points. But when we think about those kind of things, uh, there are, can be some kind of a counter of the self. The boundary of the self is there in the computer uh, the systems. Then we can also investigate then how this can counter self will affect our communication and the interaction in the metaverse and the actual communication. Okay, so that's a, that's a project I recently did and also a continuation, some continuation, and then that is a kind of project. And then back to some like my topic. So that is a kind of right now initial topic of the cyber humanity, but not only that, because recently you might know of many advancements of the technology and also like a kind of cyber avatar or some like a new type of body is coming in, in the way of the technology. But also we have to think about the science or the, this new human and computer integrated situation. That's why, that's why I recently started to here as a visiting researcher. So I want to, I want to explore about like a science of human computer integration. And I was looking for some opportunity for doing some research. And then I found, oh, maybe OIST is the, the place. So I thank you for the OIST to having me as a visiting researcher. I recently started, started some of the the lab space in the lab five, as we called, we called Cybernetic Humanity Studio. And then 
I, the some of them is actually working on the here. So again, so I, I just want to thank you to my team in the Sony CSO, and they are very brilliant. And also without them, we cannot do any, I can't do anything. And then that's, uh, that's my end of talk. And actually we had a demo in the level five after the public lecture. So please sign up and then come back here. That's all, thank you so much. And thank you very much. So we have time for a couple of questions from the audience. Let's use the microphones for, for the translator. Thank you for the super nice presentation. Uh, I'm interested in the, I, I want to have a question on the, uh, the, the parallel adaptation one. Sure. So um, in your study, you said uh, by changing the, the point of view, uh, the participant uh, get more easy to uh, get used to the, the uh, uh, get easy, easily adapt, adapt uh, the new, let's say, body schema. Sure. But um, I'm curious about, it is because of the difference of First person view or third person view, or it is because of just the difference of the angle of the viewpoint. Because I feel like when I imagine I'm doing some manipulation when I see the mirror, I feel like it's sometimes difficult to adapt the manipulation. <clears throat> so it's third person view, but it, I feel like it's still difficult. So uh, have you ever tried um, investigate more different angles, not just yeah. Left or right? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good question. Good question. Thank you so much. That is a good, so I think like a, that the kind of the STEM question is like a, what kind of situation, what perspective provide us to sense of the dual bodies, dual coordination, or dual cue to having a body. And honestly, in the experiment, we found this phenomena in when we compared the first person and the third person. And then the third person works well. But we are actually investigating another condition to make this parallel adaptation happen. And then we found, luckily found like a third person is not the way, not the only way to make it happen. And it is actually there, if we have some like a, if we can design some the spatial cue to create some like a context to the movement and the body movement, we might actually can produce same like a parallel adaptation happening. But also important point is like we are, this is a working hypothesis, but also if we found, if we explicitly understand, recognize the rotation, this video rotation will not happen, I guess. If we can start to thinking about oh, this is a, this band, this is this body, this way, this, this can do our attention that doesn't happen. But only when we are implicitly doing without any like knowledge, this is happening, I guess, but I'm still working on hypothesis, but thank, thank you for the great question. Okay, thank you for the response. Another question from the audience. Oh, okay. I think there was another hand over there. So we have, you can go first. One, two, three. Right. Uh, Thank you for a fascinating presentation. I wanted to ask about the sense of self um, section, which raises so many interesting thoughts about all kinds of, of thinking about potential uses and training and teaching and many uses. But I was thinking about when you were saying there was a point when, and, and really just what does it mean when you say that's not me anymore? And I, you know, your gestures, I suppose, are all yours, but the image you're seeing at somebody else mm. in that experiment. Did you, I mean, maybe it's just going beyond the scope, but think about what's the impact when somebody thinks, oh, it's not me anymore. That sort of sense of um, uh, kind of disconnection between what you're looking at, um, because it seemed to me in sort of in sort of psychological implications, it could be very very interesting. So I wondered if you could talk a little bit about sure. that. Thank you, thank you. That's that's actually a great question. That and also that's why 
we made it to investigate the sense of self. Uh, because like, uh, uh, the, I will a bit talk about a bit precisely. So in this morphing identity experiment, you see your face. The, your face, I, only visual identity will become another person. But movement itself is always real time. So it means in kind of the in terms of the movement, we embodied the face, but still identity go away. <laughs> so there are actually interesting uh, phenomena that happen because it's of, of course in the very beginning, this is still me, it's okay. And then in the middle of the morphing, it's kind of like I'm moving, I'm kind of using another identity, but it's okay. It's the interesting phenomena that happen in the opposite, like a swapped version. It means like a, I am moving other faces, and still I feel like oh this is my motion, but still identity is not my me. And also same time, in other side, other person is moving my face, and it's actually I feel like identity. Identity is I going to the different side, but still my the real time sense of self is stay in the like left. So it means a kind of the, we can also think of the minimum the narrative or some different level of the self. But in, the, in this context, some kind of the different level of the self is, um, how to say, having a, some conflict to each other. And then giving some interest, uh, actually interesting uh, question happens. Okay, thank you. So we have two, two more. Let's, let's make them quick question and quick responses. Sure. Please. Thank you so much uh, for this very inspiring presentation. And I um, uh, really enjoyed the demos. I got the chance to try earlier. Um, uh, it's perfect. I was actually um, wondering uh, something about this uh, research. Uh, and um, I apologize if maybe you mentioned it and I missed it. Mm. But I was wondering if you tried um, to explore the impact of gender, mixing gender in the pairs, uh, male with male, male with female, female, and all. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. thank, thank you. Honestly, so. Uh, we didn't, we didn't finish that kind of the control of the experiment because like we collected data from the exhibition. But definitely those kinds of gender difference might impact the, the changes, I guess. So, but I should answer is unfortunately not. And I, I think this is interesting. Okay, uh, can you pass the mic? You're stunning uh, presentation. I'm interested in the uh, world, uh, your research, uh, um, cybernetic humanity. Humanity have a broad meaning, like a cultural meaning and a political meaning and a societal meaning. So how do you incorporate this diversity of the meaning of humanity into your research? Do you have, do you have a, a particular scheme or a framework for, um, to do that? Thank you for asking this question. That is something I want to convey this talk. So like initially, the, what I'm doing right now is more like for individual humanity, individual sense of self. But when we think of it more like a broader way of the technology and the computer integrated, uh, the computer and the human technology integrated, I think we have to think of the more broader way of the social. And when we think of the, how, what is a, I was wondering about what is the best word to describe not only individual, but not only the society, the, con the many of the continuation among them, the range, I put society. So uh, it's like now, I'm, my, my research is most likely focused on the individual, but I, in the collaboration with OIST, for instance, I want to expand this notion into the more like a diverse way. That's a short answer. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Let's thank the speaker one more time. Thank you, Shun.